welcome to Donuts Manufactory. In the spirit of changing gears, shifting gears, uh, what I decided to do, my I got my um, True Track carrier assembly, and so I got the uh, extra third member, 90 inch third member that I have, or out of the attic, and I have been setting up the three and a half gears with the True Track carrier. Uh, it's a little too deep on the pinion and I don't have a shim kit, so I gotta wait for that. Plus, I'm missing an O-ring for the pinion. They don't have anything locally, so I had to order it. So I was just getting my pattern figured out there. See, I don't know if you can see that or not. Right there, these are used gears, so I'm uh, desperately trying to get the uh, pattern as close as I can get it, but there's no way I can get a textbook brand new set of gears pattern over here on the back side of the tooth. So for deacceleration, uh, the pattern has moved out towards the heel a bit. If I move the uh, pinion a little further out, the patterns get more centered, but it's a little too far on the on the front side of the gear it's too far towards the outside be aware that the true track carrier assembly is not as thick where the bolts go through um, the original ford carrier is thicker across here than the true track the bolts are like two threads too long, I think. So I have them tight, but not torqued. I think I might have to pull them out and grind the ends off a little bit and then put them back in. And I'll put them in with Loctite this time. I had to wait for parts, wait for this little kit that had shims and stuff in it and the new parts and stuff I needed. That is what I am doing today. So one thing I wanted to show you is how do I do all this? How did I figure out what rear end ratio uh, that I want? Yeah, okay, so I'll show you that. Okay, so what we have here is a little spreadsheet that I worked out by putting the tire diameter in right here, 24.2. Well, if the tires are new, they are, they're actually 24.3. And you can see that the speeds immediately changed. What I would do here is look for a speed. See, here's uh, 61 miles an hour. This is with the top loader. My axle ratio uh, was 325. This is back in uh, 1974 or 72 when I first put the 9-inch rear end in. So 24.3 on tires. Now I've got overdrive in here, but really one there. Okay, there is no overdrive. Okay, so what I tend to do here is figure out two things I need to know. My peak horsepower, peak power, and peak torque. So this is what the why the top loader is so good. Let me just put 5,500 in here, which is peak power on my motor. Uh, 52 miles an hour in low gear. So when I shift to second, what I do is I change the RPM here, get 52 miles an hour down here, which should be around 4,000 RPM. So 5,262, okay? That means I'm losing, I'm dropping 1,500 RPM from 5,500 down to 4,000. Well, my peak torque is actually lower than that. It's around 3,800. But the idea is that I am not dropping below peak torque when I make a shift. I did that same calculation for all the gears, and that's what these numbers are right here. So you can see that I'm well into the power band with every shift over here. So the main problem with the top loader is getting enough hole shot. With the 325s, that's pretty high geared. I had to uh, worry about bogging or just lighten the tires off and they never grab. 
But the motor has so much low end torque that my launch RPM was actually 1800. And then I would just feather the throttle in. And if you go to the drag racing video, I'll put the link, Betsy at the drags, I'll put the link down in the uh, description. When you hear that hole shot, that's exactly what I'm doing. So that I'm not burning too much rubber and I'm getting about as much grip as I can out of my street tires. Um, and then it has to pull gear, pull low gear from like 2000 up. So there's quite a little weight for the power band to come on. But cruising speed, see in fourth gear, let's get to, uh, you know, 60 some miles an hour. It's t between 2800 and 3000 cruising down the road. And that's mainly, I mean, the gears are seem fairly tall, but it's because my tires aren't that big in diameter. That's if I wanted to do that overdrive with the top loader. The thing that's really cool about it, though, is that there's not that much RPM drop between gears, so it pulls really hard. And actually, my quickest ET ever was with this setup. Not with the overdrive, of course, but with just with the uh, top loader and the 325s. And I was down in the 13s with this setup. Let's look at my TKX calculations. Here's the TKX that I bought, the 17765. Uh, axle ratio is 3.5. I thought it was 355, but it's not. It's 35 teeth versus 10, three and a half. I did the same calculations over here. And this is the, the unfortunate thing about the, uh, the later transmissions is that they're really set up for uh, gas mileage and whatnot. Um, and so look at the RPM drop, 1900. So it's going from 5,500 down to 3,500, which is underneath peak torque. So I'm actually going to take a hit on acceleration here. But if we look at 5,500, so now it's only 39 miles an hour instead of 52 for the top loader when I'm shifting out of first gear. So what this requires, you know, these later transmissions are set up for later rigs like uh let's just say a mustang with the uh long ram intake so it has a lot of mid-range torque and this doesn't hurt you quite so much oh five oh okay 2050 and there's my 62 miles an hour okay that's how i go about calculating all of this stuff out here with that formula there see if i just do it that way you can see it as well J6 tire diameter times pi divided by 12 times the engine RPM divided by the rear end ratio times 60 divided by 5,280, which is feet per mile. And that gives you your miles per hour based on your engine RPM and your tire diameter. Uh, okay, once again, 24.3. The world-class T5 has a 3.35 low gear. So what are, how much RPM drop do I get uh, when I go to my 1-2 shift? Maybe about 3,200? Yeah. So all the way down to 3,200 from 55. So 2,300 RPM. I'm losing 2,300 RPM shifting from first to second gear. That's 600 RPM under my peak torque. That would be uh, hard to get around. I mean, the TKX was only 1,900 RPM, and this one is 2,300 RPM. And that's because the low gear is so low. But it's also got a 0.68. So that puts my 60 mile an hour cruise, oh boy, probably 1,900. Oh wow, way lower than that. So this is unacceptable too. See, it's about 1,750. There's my 62 miles an hour, 1750. That is below. Uh, the other thing I want to do is when I'm in cruise, um, I have to be at the bottom end of the, when the torque and the power of the motor starts coming on. And below 1800, the motor is, is just going to bog. So it's not going to be fuel efficient and it's going to be just horrible for performance. You know, you hit a little hill and you'll have to downshift. That's why the 3.0s would not be a good choice with the world class. 
if I had 3.25, see, now I'm up at 1,900. There we go. So now I'm at 1,900 when I'm in overdrive. So this becomes the better choice, three and a quarter gears with the overdrive. One thing you can look at too is what kind of a hole shot you're going to have here. So let's uh, let's just go over here. Let me just call this one up. Okay, bing. Right. Let me just move this around so we can see. Okay, three point three five times three point two five. A ten point eight low gear. Now that's actually a pretty good hole shot. To put that in perspective. If I was running three point, well, let's just say, uh, let's clear that, 4.11s times low gear on the top loader. Three, no, wait, clear, mm, 4.11 times 2.32. There we go. So 4.11 gears with the top loader is only a nine and a half hole shot. 9.5 to 1 hole shot. Now, if you went 456, maybe 456 times 2.32. There's your over 10. It would take a set of 456 gears with a top loader to equal the same hole shot that you're going to get with the world class T5 with three and a quarters. Okay, my T5. So this is what Betsy is currently using. Has a 0 0.72 overdrive at 5,500 RPM. I have a 44 mile an hour, 45 miles an hour in low gear. So it's a 295, let's just call that up again. 2.95 times three. So it's 8.85 hole shot. Uh, when I go to the TKX, I'm gonna have better hole shot by a long shot. But the price you pay for that, huge RPM drops between gears. See, like, here we go. 5,500 gives me 45 miles an hour. So let's get 4490 here. 3,600. There we go. From 5,500 down to 3,600. So 1,900 RPM drop between first and second gear. 3600 is still just a hair under my peak torque. Uh, it was better to over rev. So instead of 5500, let's say I took it up to 5800. Now, what this is doing is it's taking me past peak power. The G force acceleration of the car, as you go over peak power, the acceleration G force begins to wane. And then when you shift, the vehicle has to pick that up again. But doing that, 4735, let's see, now let's get up to 3800. See, now I'm at 3800 when I shift. So there was the compromise. Uh, if I shifted at peak power, then I have a lag or a sort of a flattening out of the acceleration because I'm under peak torque. But if I take it over past peak power and shift, I'm right at peak torque when I make the shift. So the question is, which way is faster? 62 miles an hour at 1850. See, that's just, that's 50 RPM into the torque coming on, the power curve coming on on the, on the motor. Um, so if I go a little faster, if I drive 65, Okay, 67 miles an hour here. Then I'm well into the low end of the power curve. And I was getting 23 miles a gallon with this setup. So this wasn't a bad compromise. A halfway decent hole shot. A little bit too much RPM drop on my 1-2 shift. A little better on the 2-3 shift. Just right for cruising. And so that's where how I ended up here. Get to 5,700, and I go to 41 miles an hour instead. See? So I have the exact same 
result here if I over rev past peak power by 200 RPM then I hit right at peak torque when I do my one two shift I mean at 5500 I can really right in the seat of my pants I can feel the power fall off I actually think that after I don't know 40 years gosh has it been that long I'm starting to lose valve control and that's why um, the power falls off at 5,500 so severely. If I had a little, little bit better valve spring in there or just put new ones in, I could. the power band would be a nice smooth arc rather than coming up to 55 and going plunk. So that would help in my acceleration. Let's, uh, let's go over this way. And let's look for the... Uh, where in the heck? This is the top loader. Let's go to the Tremec TKX here. There it is. Okay. So where am I going to be in fourth gear going through the traps? If I'm doing, I have the same amount of horsepower, so I'm not going to go any faster. So 106 miles an hour, 5,200, 107, 5,100. 105.29. Anyway, so somewhere around 5100, 5200 RPM is when I'll be clearing the traps with with no modifications to the motor. If I do something to the motor like, uh, oh, I don't know, put on better heads. I mean, I'm not even running headers. If I did something like that, and let's say I got up to 110 miles an hour, you know, I, I can do 113 at 5500 with this setup. If I put a set of AFR heads on it and some headers and a different cam, uh, I, this setup with the transmission and the rear end will still give me plenty of of speed. It just you know, it'll be just right. Let's say uh, I put a bigger cam in it so I can go six thousand. See now I'm up to 123 miles an hour at six thousand RPM going through the traps. So th this really lends itself to what I want to do with the car. Anyway, those are my thoughts, and that is how I figured out which transmission I wanted, which ratios, what rear end gear, and that's why I'm putting in three and a halfs, since I'm ending up kind of in the same spot that I was in with the T5. My 62 mile an hour cruise, though, is it was 2050, I think, yeah. So 2050 instead of 1850. Third member is complete. Everything's torqued and it's got a thread locker on it. Ended up setting it up at 11 thousandths of uh, backlash. Got a really good pattern. If you need to know more about how to do this, I am not the, I am not the source. I, uh, no sense in you watching me because all I did was go online and watch guys that actually know what they're doing and figured it out from there. So anyway. There you have it, a completed third member. I'll leave uh, links in the description for the people that I watched for how to do this. So you can reference it if you need. Nine inch, 28 spline, true track, 350 rear end ratio. Yay!